Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game The Dark Quarter by Van Ryder Games and Lucky Duck Games. In this cinematic game, you're going to be using a digital portion of it, which is like an app or on your phone, and you're also going to be using the board portion, the tabletop presence of the game. You'll be selecting between one to four players to play as detectives, vampires, and sorcerers slash sorceresses uh, in the streets of New Orleans as you attempt to solve murders and mysteries. Mysteries. This game is similar to games like Chronicles of Crime and Destinies, in which you are going to be basically moving from location to location, finding points of interest, choosing specific paths of conversation by different folk that you'll meet along the way, and interacting with your dice. You'll be rolling these die and trying to gain successes along the way to open up more of the story, until finally you come to the conclusion, the big boss, or the big finale event, and you see what happens tons of different mystery along the way and choices that you can make in the game The Dark Quarter. Find out all about this game as I explain the basic ideas of setup, of course how to play, and then our review. Setting up the game is very simple. You're going to take out the main board of the game and place it down on the table. And then you are going to gather a character for each player playing the game. When you start with the app, it's going to tell you where each character's stats are going to go. And there's four different types of stats. You have green, red, purple, and yellow. And they each represent something. Like for instance, yellow represents charisma. And you're going to place these cubes on the specific numbers they tell you to. So it might say charisma, you're going to have a five, an eight, and an 11 bonus. So you'll put those cubes there. You're also gonna be getting these main dice here that you're gonna start and place on your board. And then you're gonna get additional smaller dice that you'll place offside your board. There's also these point of interest markers specifically made for your character so that when you have a location that you need to check out, but only you can take a look at it or interact with that player, that will tell you in the app which one it is based on how you place it. There's also story cards you'll get throughout the game. If it tells you to start with a story card, like for instance, maybe an evidence file, you'll place it face up in the on the table within reach of all players. And then you're going to want to set up all of the rest of the stuff. There's a ton of different tokens and markers that you're gonna place out. And of course, you're going to start with one of the starting player abilities that you're going to be able to keep throughout the game. And each player has their own unique cards that you can choose from. The ones that have an S are the ones that you can choose. All the decks are now set up. There's no additional open locations, literally just the board here. And you're gonna push enter on that app. From there, the game is kind of straight out unfolding in before your eyes. You You'll be seeing new points of interest come up on the map and new characters come out. You'll be moving your characters to unique little specific locations that you'll see. So it's kind of like an overview of the game and then it's going to have like a more zoomed in feel as you get to each of the different locations. So a lot of this setup is not really going to be needing a whole lot of B-roll because basically I am just, you basically just push that app button. It kind of shows you how the game plays and how the story unfolds directly in front of your eyes and where everything needs to go, which is a whole nice little experience in itself if you haven't played any of these styles games. Now on your turn, it's going to tell you in the app who starts, you're going to be able to do certain things. There's optional things and then there's things that must happen. The first thing that happens is you'll take one of these small die and you'll place it on your player board. You're always going to refresh one of those die and that way you'll be able to utilize these die during specific skill checks. Whatever, however, whenever you roll the small one, it gets exhausted and you cannot use it again. Your big one are always going to return to you. Now, you're also gonna start with an item and it'll tell you in the setup what you start with. Some people are gonna start with like a crowbar or maybe a love potion or perhaps a gris gris. And those are gonna be helpful, not only to be able to discard for certain actions, but also in events on the story. And you'll have these little QR codes that will explain that. After you've gathered your die for your turn, then you're going to have, be able to do uh, these different types of things. One, you can interact with one of the story cards, which means you can use the QR code reader on the app to look at one of these guys and it'll give you some type of information. Two, you're going to be able to purchase upgrades. Your character has upgrades that you can utilize and they're gonna cost experience. At the end of the game, you'll have no experience, but you'll gain more throughout the game and everything is kind of pooled together and players can choose who gets to use what experience and what uh, different applications that they can be used for. Like for instance, maybe I wanna increase street smarts with winter Mullins, uh, but I started with the old dog new tricks card. And these things kind of interact with the game in unique ways and specifically your character. 
Then after that, you're going to be able to choose a point of interest. On the map, there's going to be pins, and these pins are gonna start off black, and you're going to be able to enter them. And when you do enter them, you'll flip them over, and then you'll be able to go to that location. It'll say something like, choose this location, number three, and leave it out, and then add new points of interest on the location, and take your character and place that character on that location. And now you can interact with one of the different things in this location. Uh, so for instance, if I want to, I don't know, walk my dog, I would go to the park. Park. The park would then be flipped and I would reveal what the park looks like and what everything there is at the park. Maybe there's a beggar on the street, maybe there's an extra dog, maybe there's a fallen branch, and those things will have point of interest. You'll choose one of those things and then you're going to uh, check the app and see what happens. Sometimes there's dialogue, sometimes there's going to be events that'll take place that will involve you rolling these dice to make skill checks. And other times, nothing will happen really that much other than just progress the story. And then at best, you'll get a story card, these unique cards that will help you progress throughout the game that kind of give you an overarching sense of what happens. Now, there is usually a main story arc in the game. Usually it's like somebody has died or somebody has gone missing. However, there's also like optional side quests that you can do. Like for instance, my vampire might be needing some blood from the blood bank, so I might have to take a detour to get that, otherwise she might become enraged. Or maybe Winter Mullins, the detective who's a little bit more on the sloshy side, a little bit more on the drinky side, he might want to go and get some booze. And if you don't get that, he might become irritated or whatever. So there's different things you can choose to do along the game, all while following the overarching story. You're all working together in this game, uh, and you're trying to progress the story storyline, but you all have your own individual quests as well. Once you have done that point of interest and chosen a specific point of interest in there, you're going to go through a dialogue chain or an event chain, and then it'll tell you to end your turn. You'll then pass the tablet to the next player, and then that player is going to start by gathering a die, placing it on their board, and selecting a new point of interest. As well as, sometimes on your turn, events will take place, things that you might not foresee. Maybe there's only two points of interest before it gets passed to you, and all of a sudden, bam, another one opens up because maybe somebody got into a car wreck or maybe somebody uh, was transported to a different dimension and uh, now there's a crater left in its space and you want to go there to investigate and that might lead to a portion of the story in the game. And that's how it goes, basically. You go around the table checking out point of interest, utilizing the application on your phone or tablet and seeing what it does, rolling your dice to try and get these skill checks available and um, always, of course, you have the different options. If I have a four, seven, and a nine and I roll these dice and I get two fours, that's eight. And a four and a seven is lower than eight, so I get a plus two to my bonus, uh, which will be able to check to see if I succeed these skill checks or not, but you maybe not get the nine. And additionally, you can also push your skills to the left, which is going to help you progress your uh, successes throughout the game. And you'll need these as you progress, otherwise you might fail. Certain people might get angry with you. There's a whole lot of stuff going on, but uh, the basic synopsis of it is you choose a point of interest, then take a, take a look at another interest point inside that one, go through the dialogue chain, end your turn, pass, refreshes all their stuff, and continues. And until the final ha thing happens in the game, the big finale, you'll take this little marker here, and uh, basically you'll go through this like, uh, not able to choose different paths type of a story arc. Well, maybe you're fighting the big final bad boss or whatever, and you'll see what happens and the endings and the characters change based on how you do. And then of course you can play the next portion of the story. And in this game here, this one here, you're able to play four different stories just in the base game alone, but there will be additional stories that will be added and they're gonna have a different story campaign mode for the game. So let's go ahead and now talk about my review. I think you have a good idea of how this is played. And if you've ever played Chronicles of Crime or Destiny, then you'll have an even better idea. The Dark Quarter is a hybrid app board game style game. Now, there's not a whole lot of companies that have been doing this uh, previous to Lucky Duck, but there was things like you know, World of Yoho and like some other small application card games that I had seen before utilizing QR codes and uh, the, the ability to converse with certain things on the board. But what was first introduced to me with this style of game is of course Chronicles of Crime. This is the original one uh, by Lucky Duck Games. And you basically will go around gathering clues, gathering new locations and new characters, and you'll be utilizing your specific weaponry and whatnot to deduce who the big bad is at the very end of the game. It'll ask you a bunch of questions, and if you can pr properly deduce who was the big bad, you win. And usually there's a nice little twist, and there's a ton of different stories in the Chronicle of Crime universe, and there's a 
done a different Chronicle of Crime games. The next thing they presented was the Destinies uh, game. This one here is with uh, Mythic Games, and this is kind of a choose your own destiny style game that utilizes a lot of the Chronicle of Crime things, but now you've got a full board that you interact with little miniatures, and there's a ton of minis in this game in which you're going to go along and try and solve your own destiny individually. You are trying to compete against the other players. So we had a cooperative and then we had a non-cooperative and then we have Dark Quarter now. Now this one here is a co-op but you're now choosing your own path and you don't really feel like you're connected to the other players in the game so much until certain things happen to them and you see their events unfold on the board. And the other thing about them being cooperative, which is nice, is you're going to be pooling resources and deciding amongst each other. Now you're not of course against each other in any way and you are working together to solve the same goal and to solidify certain means means and you can kind of uh, co coerce other players to do the right thing as opposed to the wrong thing, whatever that might be. Um, but it does feel different than the Chronicle of Crime. Uh, now it's obviously more similar to that than Destinies, but the way it plays actually functions with both of these guys here. The new locations that pop out with new points of interest are very similar to the Chronicle of Crime's universe in which you're going to be like investigating people and talking to them. They're going to be disappearing and showing up again. And then of course the main game board with the point of interest and being able to move through and choose different ones is going to be more like the Destinies system. So the main thing is, did you like Chronicles of Crime? Did you like Destinies? If you did and you've played these games before, this is an easy pickup. You're going to enjoy this game. This is an even more uh, like a cinematic feel. Uh, it's a longer variant. Um, I just got one of the different of four modules for this, and there was a lot going on. A lot of different story arcs, uh, everything kind of came together in the end, and I'm not gonna spoil anything. I kind of give you a little bit of spoilers, small ones, as I explain how the game works, but uh, you'll not, hopefully not be able to tell the difference between what I was giving you and I wasn't. Regardless though, it was nothing like too detrimental. I, I wanna kinda keep this spoiler free so that you can envision and play the game yourself and see what happens along the way. Uh, but like I said, it's basically these two games kind of combined into one new game with a more cinematic feel. Yes, you're using the same, cinema, uh, the same dice that you'd be using for the Destiny system, you're using the locations from the Chronicle of Crime system, and your app is basically going to function like kind of both of them put together as you interview and question people and go to different locations and take a look at this or that. And then of course you've got your miniatures that you're utilizing as well. There's the big bads and then there's the people of interest and then you have your main characters and you'll be able to interact with people um, on the same space as you, which is nice as well. So if you have, I don't know, Constance and you have Paris together on the same position of a map, you can share different items and work together in those type of ways as well. So there, there does bring a little bit of uniqueness to the game. Um, and of course, cooperation that adds to it. Uh, overall, this system is an excellent system. This is one I had been praising since uh, I first saw Chronicles of Crime at a convention on its early stages, and I've now witnessed how it has grown and expanded. And for those movie lovers out there, for those D&D storyteller lovers out there, this is going to be a game that's going to attract and draw you in. I think for uh, the app style games, this is the best one that I have ever seen. Um, they've all been like the same type of system so they're all in that same category of as awesome app games, theatrical experiences, and unique decisions and choices that will change the story. Is this game complex or complicated? No, not really. There's choices that you can make, there's a certain number of options, there's a certain number of dialogue, and you'll choose between those and change the story. It's kind of like a web of a tree that kind of branches out based on your decisions, which all get brought together at the final, the finale, with the big boss, or the big thing that happens that changes the events in history for Forever of the specific world. They bring out New Orleans, which is done very well, very respectably, and they give it that unique dark twinge to it. It's got some profanity in it, and it is darker than um, some of the other games as well. So it has kind of a dark, cryptic feel, adding sorcery and vampirism along with these like detectives, and maybe all four of them are kind of a little bit of all of those things, or at least in those worlds. And it brings a darkness to this New Orleans, like uh, this board here that represents since the different places you're gonna be able to visit throughout the game. The quality of the game is top notch. Everything works as intended. This is a prototype and it will be changed to be higher quality by the end of the, uh, you know, by the time you get your copy if you pick up this game. Uh, but what is here is very, very nice. I know what to expect from these uh, prototypes and I always know that they're excellent quality. And I know at the very end of all this, they're gonna have an excellent quality uh, as well. I mean, even with these Chronicle, like if I open this box up, which you can see my other videos, you'll see that they have a super high quality to them. 
The dice are excellent, super, super excellent. I think most dice people are gonna really love these dice. And all the artwork is spectacular. They do an excellent job with this game. Uh, people who might not like this game are people who probably want more of a tactical decision-making feel where it's not really telling a story. It's not really, you're, you are playing a game and you are making choices and they do change the course of history in the game and how, how things unfold, but there's still an arc to it. Um, if you're looking to like beat somebody or to work together to fight a big bad, the main thing that's gonna happen with this here is pushing your stats over, rolling the dice and getting what you need and successfully completing the story to the best of your abilities. There's a bit of luck involved in the game based on how you roll the dice. You could succeed every time, fail all the time, uh, you can, you make yourself spend all these like resources to like guarantee successes. Uh, but those people who don't like dicey games are not gonna like this, I think is the best way of putting it. If you like the storytelling aspect though, you're gonna enjoy this. If you even like the older school games, like the Arabian Nights, Tale of Arabian Nights, or even the this War of Mine type of a feel of a cinematic experience, then the Dark Quarter is gonna be something you're going to want to pick up. And hopefully that kind of makes sense to you. For me though, still an excellent game that crosses over between all the different platforms, adding Van Ryder games, which are excellent uh, storytellers. I've seen a lot of their choose your own adventure style books and those are 10 out of 10 as far as those go. And they brought their expertise in here and you can see it flowing throughout the game. So yes, do I think you should pick this up? Obviously, I'm still been a big fan. I'm going to be keeping this copy up until I hopefully get another one that is the production version. And we're going to play through this again with some other people and maybe even live on stream, we'll see. But yes, pick this game up, you, you, you'll love it. I, I know you will. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game The Dark Quarter, currently up on Kickstarter, link in the description. You can also go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, where you see some more blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We have reviews of people that are not me doing written reviews Reviews, so you can watch them at work when the boss ain't watching. <laughs> you can also go ahead and check out our live stream every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST where we play games literally just like this one. You can see games like these and determine for yourself if they're fun and playable, something that you want to jump into because you can see the reactions and the faces of the people and kind of get a more sense of how the gameplay works in those streams. All right, guys, that is all I got for you other than subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification button to see more games like these, more gameplay and all that kind of stuff. It keeps us going here and we do greatly appreciate it. All right, thank you for watching, and as always, I look forward to venturing in to the dark quarter with you next time.